And that's a wrap of this year's breakouts. So many great insights. Don't forget, if you've missed anything, all sessions will be available on demand, so be sure to check them out. As we saw yesterday with the nominations of the ESG Awards, the shared services industry has come a long way within sustainability. And it is no surprise that this is because it is the rising up the mandate of many GBS leaders, including Amir Kagawala, a fellow colleague of mine, who is leading on sustainability within our UK practice in the, in the GBS team. Welcome Amir to the studio. Thank you, Kalyani. So I'm going to kick off. Why don't you explain to our audience what are the key elements of a GBS sustainability play? So for me, the biggest part of sustainability and the support GBS can provide is probably data. And that is an area which is exponentially growing because of the demands of sustainability information. And that demand is coming from a number of different places. So some is coming from regulations and there's a number of big global European and in my case UK centric legislation that's coming in that will require mandate information to be provided in a certain way at a certain time. There's also data that's demanded internally as well. So a number of most companies, probably every single company, I might be bold to say out here to, that we've seen, have made sustainability targets that go beyond legal requirements. But those promises are often very public and many of the companies are very, um, very much in the media and very much aware that that message has got out there. So they want to make sure that they're delivering on those promises. But those promises also to internal staff as well. They're also wanting to be part of that journey. So data is the key to all of that. So getting the data that currently resides all over the world in different formats on different software, bringing it together, analyzing it, and actually doing that in a timely way and probably in an auditable way as well. And that to me is the big area that GBS can support sustainability. Great. You answered my next question. So, uh, how does G uh, sustainability as a function, because it's all about the business case, how do I as a GBS leader explain the business case and hence the funding required to bring sustainability into GBS? That's a great question and it's a challenge that many companies do face, that very question, Jinmei. And I think they need to also look at business case differently when it comes to sustainability. So normally, if you was bringing in a more standard GBS function, finance, HR, procurement, you would look to see what those savings we bought by maybe moving the work offshore, automating it, removing it by streamlining the processes, all the things that we know very well. In sustainability, the business case is very different. It's not about cost saving. It's not about reducing the number of people. In fact, it's probably the reverse of that. It's gonna cost you more. But it's all about a number of different aspects. One of them, a big one, is cost avoidance. So we know that some of the legislation coming in is gonna be penalty driven as well. If you don't provide the information or you're not meeting those targets, there will be a penalty that can be applied. And some of them are very bold. Some of them are talking about two to three percent of global revenue, some really, really big numbers, especially from the companies that we've, we've seen over the last couple of days. So that's a really important part of it. But also, many companies are struggling under the weight of the information and data and analysis and reporting that's required. And so they're only actually doing a fraction of what they need to do. So actually, you may need to expand or provide support for those teams by supplementing in a way that GBS does it the best, which is flexibly, not just increasing the number of people, but looking at technology and automated solutions, mm -hmm. streamlining processes, removing work. So all of those aspects, GBS does very well. So it is not a standard or typical business case. It needs to be looked at very differently. Um, and that's a challenge for people who are using sort of standard models or standard ways of asking for project funding. And that's one that needs to be, I think, through education and through explanation and through taking the time to explain why actually this is actually a different situation. Very interesting. In your opinion, Amiya, are today's GBS leaders ready to push the, G uh, the sustainability agenda more into GBS? And if not, how can they go about it? So sustainability leaders in a company need a solution and they are looking for support from their organization. 
Now, whether that comes from GBS or somewhere else is a question that I think GBS has to help answer for them. So they absolutely either need to bolster their own teams, find another team, or externalize it, whatever they need to do. But this is where I believe GBS can play a really big part in this, which is to show them some of the benefits and some of the history of GBS and the reasons why GPS exists. And that is to bring processes together, to streamline it, to um, simplify, centralize all the words that you may have seen earlier on on the screen when, when, when we were talking about definition of sustainability and, and the AI tool was also defining it as well. And sustainability, that wild west time we're in at the moment with everything all over the place and that need to bring it together in a sensible, quick, timely, accurate way mm -hmm. is the reason why GPS has been successful for the last 30 years and sustainability is another service that can be provided. But I'll add one more thing, Chen May, if I may. There's also uh, one of the, GPS is one of the few functions that looks across an organisation. It's not siloed like like many functions are, and so it gets the benefits because sustainability data is required in finance to support them when they're making investment decisions, when they're making choices of product. Procurement will need it for looking at the emissions and their suppliers and your supplier base. HR need it because if we take ESG as a whole, there is a social and a governance aspect of the ESG. So there's data around diversity um, and inclusion and other really important factors as well. So all of that, again, having that powerhouse of analytics and skills sitting in a centralised function under GBS, I think makes a lot of sense. But sustainability is looking for solutions and I think GBS leaders need to put their hand up and actually be very proactive and say, actually, we could actually be part of that solution. Right. And you, you raised a really interesting point there, Amir. I mean, just in that sentence alone, you talked about HR and IT and finance and all the different stakeholders across an organisation. How do you think GBS leaders can really best engage cross-functionally and you know drive that consistent approach to data capture and process? I mean, that's a very hard thing to do. Yeah, and I wish I had a perfect answer yeah. to, that, to that question, and I do not. And that is one of the big challenges of GBS generally. So it is another challenge, but sustainability, I think, again, is a little bit different because there is very few solutions that are out there that most companies have to say, I've got this. I've got the sustainability agenda. We're well under control. I've not heard any organization say that. <laughs> so they actually have a problem that needs solving. Whereas you're not just trying to do something a bit better, a bit faster. They don't have anyone doing a lot of things that are going to be required. And a lot of that being required, like in the you know, 1st of January 2024, legislation's coming into place that's required. Not, not years away and we'll worry about another day. It's coming. So you need someone who can turn it quickly, who can get things ready, get you on the right path and make sure you are compliant legally, but also internally compliant to the promises that have been made to your shareholders, to your employees, to your whichever stakeholders you've got. So I think GBS is in a great place for that. But I don't underestimate the challenge of trying to bring things together. That, that will remain. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, outside the realm of GBS, everybody understands the significance and the importance of sustainability. Mm -hmm. But not everybody knows how to go about it. What would you say to people like me, people like colleagues of ours who, who work in enterprises, um, in the private lives, do you have any tips for us? So I think just GPS and sustainability have, have two aspects of it. One, which is helping the organisation to um, do the things we discussed about bringing data, to crunching, analysing and that. Secondly, GPS can be sustainable in itself and that has a role to play. Many GBS organisations are very large. We've seen companies with a third, a quarter of their workforce in GPS and others smaller but they all have a part to play and they can all contribute towards solutions themselves by becoming more sustainable in their operations, in their delivery centers, in their, um, in their offices, in, and, and get it into people's minds. So it becomes part of their DNA, not just something they give to other people. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Amir. That was a really insightful discussion. And I really loved the, the nuances of the practical reality. And thank you so much, Chin Mei, for helping me in the studio and for contributing. Thank you for having me today. What's been your highlight for this morning? I think the session that we heard from Tim Peake 
I just loved all the videos and the pictures and the experiences he shared. Just amazing. It, it was wonderful. I mean, I actually learned quite a lot. I didn't realize they did so much um, life sciences up in the uh, space <laughs> station. So that was really interesting. Um, I'm now going to hand it back to Candice to introduce our final speaker of the conference, Emma Darby. Emma Darby.